I'm Chief Warrant Officer Foster. And I would like in this film to show you a reenactment of how I made use of the polygraph during the investigation of a crime a few months ago. The incident involved an allegation that someone had broken into the PX and stolen 14 watches. We found no fingerprints at the scene which could be connected with a crime, but my investigation did reveal that one of the stolen watches was in the possession of PFC Armstrong, Echo Company. It was identified by trade name and serial number. Well, as I, as I told you before, last Sunday I just happened into Dugan's Bar and Grill for just a minute or so, and uh, I was having a beer, a, a small beer, and this guy that had come in pulled my sleeve and asked me if I'd like to buy a good watch, cheap. Well, uh, he had the watch right in my eyes when I turned around. Well, uh, when I was looking at the watch, he, uh, he was offering to sell it to me for just a fraction. Just got word that his mother was sick and uh, he needed bus fare home. Uh, he wanted ten dollars for it, but all I had was five. But he grabbed it and uh, he, he left in a hurry to catch his bus. Now I realized that, that he pulled the rush act on me so that I couldn't identify him. And he was right. But I do know one thing. He was a civilian, not a soldier. Well, all right, Armstrong, I guess that's enough for today. Yes, I know him. Uh, Danny Armstrong, sweet guy. When was the last time you saw him in here? Sunday night. About what time? Oh, eight, nine o'clock. You recall how late he stayed? I think around 10. Was he sitting alone? When I served him, he was alone. Do you recall if at any time in the evening you saw him talking with anyone? No, I hadn't noticed. I was very busy. Well, thanks very much. Well. Bye. Bye. And so it appeared he was at Dugan during and after the time the watches were stolen. But I could find no one who had seen a civilian talking to him, with or without a watch. We checked his company. Negative. Was there a civilian? If not, why did Armstrong claim there was? If so, what bus took him where, if he took a bus? At this point, I began to consider use of the polygraph. But I had to interview him once again. This second interview brought no more results than the first. Major trip, please. Major Foster here. I just completed my second interview with Armstrong. Well, not much more than I got the first time. I'd like to try the polygraph. My CO Major Tripp set up a conference with the authorizing representative, Colonel Lawrence, and our polygraph examiner, Chief Warrant Officer Davis. I briefed the Colonel with the facts and circumstances of the investigation to date. In view of the evidence presented, I will authorize the use of the polygraph in this case. Any questions? No, sir. No. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Because a polygraph examiner must understand every fact and piece of evidence connected with the investigation, I gave Davis, the examiner, a detailed briefing so he could be prepared the next morning should Armstrong elect to take a polygraph examination. I also called Armstrong's CO and requested that he see that Armstrong get a good night's rest and direct Armstrong to report to our office at 0900 the next day. Bear in mind that the polygraph is not a substitute for a thorough investigation. It is an investigation aid. 
The polygraph may, when necessary, be used in any case where the punishment may be death or confinement of one year or more, and where there is reason to believe that the person to be examined has knowledge of or was involved in the matter under investigation. Only polygraph examiners who satisfy stringent prerequisites are certified to conduct polygraph examinations. The subject is introduced to the examiner. He is greeted in a friendly but businesslike manner. The examiner then reads to the subject Article 31 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The examiner also explains the article fully, advising him of all his rights, including that of consulting with legal counsel and then informs him that he is suspected of housebreaking and larceny. The examiner then asks Armstrong if he is willing to take a polygraph examination, and it is made clear to him that a refusal on his part will in no way be interpreted as a sign of guilt. After asking a few questions about the polygraph, Armstrong consents to its use. The examiner explains the circumstances under which the polygraph will be used and whether the examination will be monitored by listening and or viewing devices. Armstrong learned that he need not answer any questions against his will, that the examination is voluntary and he may terminate it at any time. The suspect agreed to the examination and signed the statement of consent. Davis and I signed the form as examiner and witness. I left at this point. The departure of the investigator ensures that the examiner will have the privacy he needs. The subject's attention must be concentrated on the questions he has asked. The polygraph may have a psychological influence on a subject. To many, it is an unknown quantity, and as such, may be feared. To ensure against anything which might distract or disturb the subject, privacy is essential. The examiner wishes to establish rapport between the subject and himself, and to alleviate any tension or anxiety which the subject may feel. The pre-test interview should put the subject's mind at ease, and this is done best in private. Above all, the examiner must scrupulously avoid using the polygraph as a psychological prop to influence the subject, and he must not attempt to make a psychiatric or physical diagnosis of the subject. A polygraph examination must be limited to the areas directly relevant to the investigation. Danny, you've been told that you're suspected of housebreaking and larceny. Now, I've advised you fully and carefully of your rights. Do you have any questions about that? No, sir. Good. Now, the purpose of this examination is to determine just how truthful you've been to Investigator Foster. Now, you've told him repeatedly that you bought the stolen watch from a man unknown to you in a downtown bar. Sir, I'm not worried about the examination, because it's bound to prove there is no way I could have stolen the watch. Why do you say, no way, Danny? Well, I was with a buddy of mine, Private Sammy Smith, and we were at Dugan's Bar during the very time you people say the watch was stolen. We didn't go near the PX. Well, when we finish this test, we can go over and look up Sammy in Company D. He'll tell you the same thing. Private Sammy Smith, D Company. He was with you at the time the watch was stolen. Danny, the name Smith is new to me. Did you at any time mention Private Smith to Investigator Foster? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. Well, well, you see, Sammy's had some bad breaks, if you want to call him that. And, well, I sort of resent it. 
I mean, why don't you guys pick on somebody else instead of picking on him all the time? Well, anyway, I thought... I figured that Sammy would probably be blamed again, so I wanted to set the record straight right now. Okay, Danny. We'll look up Private Smith later. But now, returning to you, I need some information about you for my records. Armstrong, Daniel, middle initial, Edward E. Examiner Davis here is seeking to establish rapport with a subject to help him control his nervous tension. Usually when a man starts talking about his favorite topic, himself, his other concerns will assume a lesser importance to him. The rule is, get him to talk and let him talk. A tense, resentful, overwrought subject will bring about unwarranted responses. All right, Danny. Where do you come from? Walnut Grove, Missouri. Have you lived there all your life? Yeah. Well, uh, tell me a little about it. Well, it's just a place where I grew up. Mom and Dad still live there. Davis leads him conversationally through his background and history. And gradually, PFC Armstrong tells him all about his education level. He left Walnut Grove after two years of high school. Worked in a supermarket for a while. Was promoted rapidly from package boy to storeroom assistant and then to part-time cashier. No, he never was arrested. Never even picked up before. And I just sort of drifted around till I joined up. When I finish my hitch, I'm gonna go back and get that high school diploma. Nowadays you need it if you want to mount anything. Well, I guess that's the story of my life. Well, that's fine, Danny. I wish everybody had your cooperative attitude. Well, now the time has come to uh, work out together the questions I'll ask you in the polygraph examination. Then we'll review all of the questions. We'll dry run them several times if we have to. Now, you understand I won't ask you any question that we haven't reviewed. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. I thought that's how it worked, that you suddenly shot out a question at the guy and threw him off base. No, 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 you have my word about that, Danny. There'll be no surprise questions, only the questions that we've agreed on. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm gonna ask you some questions that I've written down as we've talked. Now, let's assume that the polygraph is now attached to you and the actual examination is taking place. Now, Danny, I want you to answer each question with a yes or no, or no more. Yes, sir. Now, if you should, uh, object to the form of any question, or if it isn't clear to you, you interrupt. If we're to proceed, certain questions must be asked of you, but I want you to understand and agree to the way each one is written. Yes, sir. Well, good, Danny. Let's start with the first question. Did you steal that watch? I told you I didn't. Now, Danny, please, I asked you, answer each question, yes or no. I'm sorry, I forgot. Sir. Okay. Did you steal that watch? No. Did you steal that watch from the post exchange? No. Did you buy that watch from an unknown person in Dugan's bar? Yes. Do you intend to answer truthfully each question regarding the stolen watch? Yes. Is your last name Armstrong? Yes. Were you born in the state of Missouri? Yes. Were you born in the month of May? Yes. Do you sometimes watch television? Yes. Are you sometimes called Danny? Yes. Well, that's fine, Danny. Now I'm going to rearrange the order with which I'll ask you the questions. Now, they'll be exactly the same questions, but don't be surprised if I ask them to you in a different order. Uh, by the way, do you think you'll have any problems with any of the questions? No, not, not if they're the same. I, uh, I shouldn't have any problems. Well, it'll be exactly the same. You have my word on that. All right, Danny, let's start the testing. Would you remove your jacket, please? I'll take it. 
Now, would you sit in this chair, please? That's it. Just relax. Now, lean slightly forward and raise your arms. Good. Examiner Davis will switch order of the examination questions for a good psychological reason. In the dry run, he asks the relevant, the most fearful question first. In the actual test, his gentle first question will allow the subject to dissipate his initial uneasiness and thus be in a more receptive condition for the balance of the test. The gentle, neutral questions that will also be asked during the test will allow reactions to the relevant questions to dissipate. The neutral questions will relax the subject, but the subject will know that the relevant questions are coming. Okay, Danny. Now, when a question is asked, the three components that are attached to your body immediately convey your reactions to those three pens over there. They write down your reaction on that moving chart. <laughs> that uh, chart language may not be intelligible to you, but it has a definite meaning to me. Look, let me uh, explain these three things to you. Now, they're all harmless. There is no pain connected with the wearing of any of these components. Like this tubing around your chest. We call that the pneumograph. It merely measures your breathing pattern. These plates on your fingers, galvanometer. They record changes in the electrical resistance in your body. That is, changes that take place on the surface of your skin. And last but not least, the cardiosphygmograph. Don't let that long name get you down. It records changes in your pulse rate and blood pressure when a question is asked. All right, Danny, you ready for the examination? Yes, I am. Now, Danny, remember, a yes or no answer to each question. And please keep your feet flat on the floor Look straight ahead and try not to move. However, don't suppress any necessary movements. Is your last name Armstrong? Yes. Do you intend to answer truthfully each question regarding the stolen watch? Yes. Do you sometimes watch television? Yes. Using a pen. The examiner writes on the edge of the chart the number of each question as it is asked. Later, he will be able to study the responses to each question he asked. Were you born in the month of May? Yes. Did you steal that wristwatch? No. Were you born in the state of Missouri? Yes. Did you steal that watch from the post exchange? No. Are you sometimes called Danny? Yes. Did you buy that watch from an unknown person in Dugan's bar? Yes. Usually, two or three charts are made. One chart is never enough for an examiner to base an opinion of attempted deception or of no attempt at deception.
And what does the chart show? To the examiner's skilled eye, it definitely shows in the suspect's answer to the question, did you steal that watch, that Armstrong was truthful in his denial. While the answer to the question, did you purchase that watch from an unknown person in Dugan's bar, shows Davis just as definitely that Armstrong was deceptive in answering the question. But now, how to talk Armstrong into honesty and truthfulness? Okay, Danny, would you sit in that chair, please? Well, Danny, I know now how truthful you've been. You mean the examination is over? Well, this phase of it is over. And with your complete cooperation, no further testing of you will be necessary. What do you mean with my complete cooperation? I've given you that. Sit down. Maybe, uh, maybe the machine is wrong. Well, there's nothing wrong with the instrument. Danny, I can now state that you yourself did not steal that watch. However, I must also state that you were not being truthful when you said you bought the watch from an unknown person in a bar. You're wrong, sir. Honestly, you are. That is, uh, I mean, the machine is wrong. Give me another test. There's no need for it. Danny, what I'm sorry about is, here you are, a pretty decent young guy, really just starting out in life. And you lie to a man who'd begun to take an interest in you and like you. Dan, I'd like to respect you, too. Somehow I feel that lying is not a part of your personality. What gets me is, here you are, lying, to protect some character who breaks into a PX to make a little dirty money. Now, you yourself wouldn't do that. And yet, I'm not the type to get another man in trouble. Oh, come on, Danny, you're not a schoolboy. A schoolboy protecting a pal who batted the ball through a window. Look, I, I know it's a difficult decision to make. But all of us have to abandon some of our childhood values when we grow up. Now, you don't intend, I hope you don't intend to go through life protecting crooks and weaklings who'll lean on you, get you into trouble. Could this get me into trouble? Well, that's not my decision to make. I uh, wouldn't want my folks to hear about it. Well, I can assure you I won't be telling your parents. But Danny, bear in mind, your folks, I'm sure, have striven to make you a straightforward, honest person. Now, all I'm asking for is just a little bit of that honesty. I didn't want that lousy watch anyway. Tell me the whole story, Danny. Got that watch from Sammy Smith. As soon as the examiner informed me about Sammy Smith, as the investigator in the case, I dispatched military policemen immediately to D Company, where they apprehended Smith and found 12 of the 14 stolen watches in his footlocker. Smith was taken into custody and later confessed. With the recovery of the stolen watches and written statements obtained from Smith and Armstrong, this investigation was successfully completed.
I had been confronted with a subject who was stubbornly replying to interrogation with lies as to how the stolen watch came into his possession. This was clearly a place in my investigation where the polygraph could help. Through its use, we established that the watch came into the possession of the subject from the actual thief who was named, apprehended, and later confessed. Remember, the polygraph is no substitute for a thorough investigation. It is a valuable aid to all investigators when properly utilized.